Hello to you, welcome to the reality show right here on Revelation Television. Once again, it's so wonderful to be with you just to share the story of a life, as in the case today, two lives touched and changed by the reality of Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about. Today, I'm going to be speaking to Chris and Kerry Cole. We've entitled our discussion, Dying to Live. Chris Cole moved from Belgium, where he was running a discotheque, back to the United Kingdom, where he found Jesus as Lord and Savior and met his lovely wife. Kerry. He went on to produce a CCM or contemporary Christian music show for a local radio station and later founded the Cross Rhythms radio network in the United Kingdom. Sadly, however, their little girl developed thyroid cancer and they learned the fragility of life. Kerry has written a book that is entitled Got to Die to Live Where Her Story Can Be Found. Chris and Kerry, thank you so much for joining us today on The Reality Show. Thank you so much, uh, Dudley, for the invitation. It's lovely, lovely to, to be, be here. with you. Yes. Lovely, fantastic. Well, let's begin with you, Chris. I did say just now that you were running a disco, a discotheque in Belgium. That must have been quite a lot of fun. And then you moved back to the UK and found Jesus. How did you come to know Jesus as Lord and Saviour? Well, I was um, fairly entrepreneurial in Brussels at the time. Um, it was a nightclub discotheque. Uh, scenario I was working in executive search and also pioneering what they called then in Brussels um, radio access radio and uh, I met on the radio a group from the full gospel businessmen's fellowship international uh, which had been birthed by Demos Shikarian in the late 50s 60s 70s all part I think Dudley of the Jesus people movement and they nurtured me. I found a group of men who I was surprised that they were really interested in me, not out of what they could get, but just interested in me. And I think the Holy Spirit was working on my life through a lot of prayer. And I found faith on December the 6th, 1981 at 11.30 p.m. Wow, you even got the time. That's amazing. So um, uh, what was your life like before you gave your life to Jesus? Well, very briefly, uh, mum and dad were great, didn't have faith. Um, they had emigrated in the 50s uh, to Canada and then to New York. My father was a fairly um, uh, capable high flyer in, uh, in commerce. He was an accountant. But my parents, when they came back uh, to the UK, they divorced when I was 16. So I'd had a good public school education. I wanted to go into the military. I was going to go to Mons. But when the, my parents divorced when I was 16, it just uh, uprooted me into a life back then at 16. I was born in 52, so 67, 68. I, was, I went into DJing in some uh, nightclubs and restaurants. And uh, I just kind of, you know, being idealistic, what's life all about? Asking those existential questions that at the time you just put sex, drugs and rock and roll into it. <laughs> Indeed. And then you came to know the reality of Jesus. Exciting stuff. We'll talk about your radio work in just a minute. But Kerry, uh, this fella landed up back in the United Kingdom and uh, you met. How did you meet? Wow. Wow. Um... Well, I had uh, I was dating someone um, at the time that Chris was around, um, but I was in a really bad way. And I'd, I'd although I'd grown up knowing about God, I'd sort of made this decision that I'd try and sort my life out without Him, which was a very bad decision. And um, I went along to hear Chris's testimony, thinking I was just going to a Christian rock band to a concert with a friend. And Chris got up and he shared his testimony. And it really convicted me because he was so truthful. And I just felt the authenticity of what he was saying was so different from this kind of religious cloak I was putting on that had a very rebellious heart. And, you know, that is ultimately hypocrisy and it's just not an authentic life. And what his words and the truth of what he was saying so cut through all of that religiosity. And I, I just thought, wow, there's someone who's really honest and they're just going for Jesus with a pure heart. And I felt really convicted. And um, it was shortly after that situation, like Chris didn't even see me that night, I don't think. Um, but I went back to the church that I had occasionally attended and 
Chris was sitting in front of me. It was a packed church and I went in late and he was, there was one seat and he was sitting in front of me. I know behind me, you were behind me, weren't you? That's right, because um, I was showing off a bit, trying to get your attention. <laughs> Playing with your nails. So that, that was the beginning <laughs> of how we met. Yeah. Okay. So he he crept up from behind, uh, and uh, and and you fell in love, and and that was it. So his his testimony had this this impact on your life, uh, Kerry. So uh, basically, I'm I'm understanding. You know, you grew up in with a Christian environment, a Christian understanding, uh, but then you discovered that Christianity, walking with God, is more than just a religion. Would you say? Yeah, it, it was an incredible transformation that I started to go through, Dudley. It was, um, it's going to sound a bit strange to some people, but Chris asked me to marry him um, like 24 hours after we met, and I just knew it was right. Um, we'd had prophetic pictures of each other before. We'd had like a vision of each other before we even met. My mum had been earnestly praying that um, my life would, be transformed and that I get on a different path and I had actually cried out to God and asked him to just bring a Christian guy into my life because I was just very messed up and I was quite mentally broken very emotionally broken terribly shy I couldn't even speak to people really um, without it being such an effort and um, and so uh, it, it was incredible the way God brought us together. And really, there was an element within the relationship where Chris in the spirit was really fathering me and the tenderness of Jesus's love to come to a very stroppy, messed up, broken young woman. Um, and he just took it. It was the love of Christ. It, was, it wasn't just a man... Um, liking a woman it, it was much much deeper than that and it was the love of Christ within him that stood for me and I was able to break on that love and he was just the light of Christ in him was just calling out for authenticity and reality in our relationship and it was like the covenant relationship of Jesus with the bride and even in the messed up dark places and I do feel this is prophetic for all of us that um, Jesus is that perfect bridegroom calling to his bride to come out of places of hiding, come out of places of darkness, be vulnerable, be truthful. Um, he died for a much greater thing to get our whole heart than for us to put on a religious covering and just try and get through life in a superficial, hypocritical way. And so there was a model of something very beautiful going on in the romance, the deep romance that was far more than, than a sort of human romance. It was a love story of Christ finding a very broken, messed up, crippled person inside. Wow, that is quite profound. Uh, and Chris, you, you came in and, and, and stepped in. And again, by the grace of God, you know, I always say grace is God's doing and God did it by his grace, by bringing you together. Uh, you know, one of my verses in life that I live by is uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. We know it well. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And the truth of that is, if you read in the Psalms, it says God knows us even before we're born. <laughs> so he knew the two of you and he brought you together according to his plan and his purpose. And that's what's so exciting about the purposes of God. How long then have you been married? Do you want to we, answer? We've been married. Got to work this is about 41st year. Yeah. So, sorry, I'm sorry. 41st. 40. 41st year. 41 years. That's amazing. Fantastic. Well done. So, uh, Chris, you were into media and, and, and stage work, uh, you know, in Belgium, and then you moved to the United Kingdom. You're doing DJing. Uh, how is it then that you, you got to present a Christian radio program on a secular station? Well, um, I'd had a prophetic call from uh, a guy called Dr. Fred Ladinius of the FGB MFI. He, and this, I didn't even know what a prophetic word was, because like you're saying, Dudley, um, I know the plans I have for you, but we don't, you know, God doesn't write us a, a, a clear letter. It's where faith is important, that you have to follow him day by day into the bigger pictures. And so I'm sort of 
you know, I understand the Calvinist Arminian debate. I think God's predetermined it, but at the end of the day, we've still got our free will, free choice. But I think that that word I got was to reach thousands, no millions for Christ through media. And by his grace, as you would say, it, he's done that. But the most important thing is not what he's done through us. It's more what we become in the process. So um, it was that prophetic word that was important because it led me to um, put a program together uh, of contemporary Christian music because the Holy Spirit had worked in my life in Belgium through Bob Dylan's track at the time. He was on his own faith journey as a Messianic Jew. He, he uh, produced an album called Slow Train Coming. And uh, there's a, a track on that called um, Serve Somebody, uh, Maybe the Devil, Maybe the Lord, out of which Kerry then wrote um, Gotta Die to Live, because it's the same as, you know, mm. you can't avoid the reality. It's my favorite book is Job, really, <laughs> as, as, uh, uh, in, the, in the issues of life. And um, so I put a promo together, submitted it to our local radio station, and um, they loved it. The religious committee didn't, but uh, they loved it. The guy called uh, Bob Hustle, who started one of the first independent radio stations in the UK, and he gave me a half hour slot. And it was called The Solid Rock of Jesus Christ at the time. That's amazing. How was it received by the listeners? The listeners loved it. It, it Ray Jar's figures went through the roof, and the Plymouth, they loved it, I think, because when I started it, I was just playing the music, but I was in sure. I didn't want to alienate the church. I was reading an awful lot of scripture just to sort of say, look, I'm orthodox, I'm kosher. But this is why I say the Jesus people movement. And Dudley, I've got to say it. If anybody sees the film Jesus Revolution with Kelsey Grammer, it is a docu film at the moment, but it's fabulous. And um, I think there's going to be there's going to be God's going to move again on a younger generation looking for authenticity. But we were birthed in that generation. It's almost like a Davidic generation, not rebelling against Saul, but or the church. But there's something new that's coming. Absolutely. Yes. And dating ourselves a little, I also gave my life to the Lord during the Jesus movement of the 70s. Uh, and uh, as you rightly say, we believe that God is indeed on the move again in this so-called post-moral, you know, post-modern world in which we live. So you were doing this, this radio show for a secular radio station. That's wonderful. Producing CCM, Contemporary Christian Music. Are you, are you a musician, Chris? No, um, I, I because I wasn't disciplined enough to um, follow my pursuit on piano uh, when I was younger uh, with all that was going on. It's probably why I became a DJ, because I love music. I think music does reach the parts that uh, no other sort of artistic temperament can really in terms of the, the creative process. So I love music, Absolutely. but certainly yeah. the DJ was the second best uh, 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 occupation. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you just said that uh, that show on a, on a non-Christian uh, platform uh, got rajah or, or listener figures, you know, so high is because, well, you know, it's the message. It presents hope, and uh, whether yeah. people agree with God or not in this world in which we live, they all agree that we need hope. So, Chris, um, Kerry, I'm going to get back to you in just a minute, but I want to continue just to ask Chris a little bit more about. Radio. So you've progressed from working on a, on a secular station. You've you founded Cross Rhythms. Tell us about Cross Rhythms. Um, <clears throat> the Cross Rhythms ministry, um, just briefly, the program was then syndicated on to other independent local radio stations. But I met a, a lovely guy called Tony Cummings, who had been the editor of Buzz, and he'd started a magazine called Cross Rhythms. And Tony originally hailed from the Plymouth area, where Kerry and I still live uh, in the UK. And um, he really felt that uh, God wanted to give me the magazine. And we were doing festivals at the time, and we were doing the radio, and um, we were doing a lot. And I thought there's no better name than Cross Rhythm. So, and, and Kerry's documented it in the book and uh, uh, Tony worked with us for years and uh, he's just a little bit older than us, slightly retired. But um, I felt at the time there's no better name than Cross Rhythms. It's the cross and it's music rhythm. So I said to Tony, well, we'll, we'll, we'll call the charity Cross Rhythms, which uh, we started. 
And so it's it's really a collaboration of the festivals that we were doing, the magazine. We couldn't sustain the magazine. We then went online. So we then became a, a massive um, uh, online presence with contemporary Christian music and our radio shows. I started to do TV uh, as well as the radio. So it all kind of blended together. But the name um, was um, a perfect name, Crossroads. And I didn't, and I'm fairly collaborative. So I, I said to Tony, I'll take the magazine over. We retained uh, Tony and Maxine uh, to help us as we built the ministry. But the name I felt was absolutely perfect for what we were doing. Absolutely. Yeah, we love that. So uh, there are a couple of radio stations. How many radio stations do you have with that, uh, that name at the moment in the well, UK? We pioneered with Ofcom uh, in the UK, uh, Community Radio. We were the first radio station to get awarded a license. And um, we uh, got that license in Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, then when I moved from uh, where I was up in Stoke back to Plymouth, we had a, we, we put a radio station together called Cross Rhythms Plymouth. And we had another one in Stockton up in the north uh, east. Um, but then we started to pioneer uh, DAB, digital audio broadcast, which we're doing at the moment. So we had three at the time. Um, but also, uh, Dudley, our real excitement is we've got a radio station in Bethlehem called Radio Hire. And we probably syndicate our programs on about 60, 70 radio stations around the world now. Wow, that's amazing. Well done. That's amazing. Praise God. We're on telly right now, but uh, radio is still yeah. a powerful medium, isn't it? It is. You've got to think with radio. Yes. <laughs> I'm not saying you have it with TV. It's just <laughs> what the pundits say. You've got to engage. You've got to use the imagination when you listen to radio. Yes. It's uh, not a competition between radio and television. <laughs> I was doing this on Revelation and, and Howard and Leslie have done a tremendous job uh, they're doing so. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and they always say radio is a one-to-one -one medium, you know, and uh, the listener on the radio station feels like he's the only person that presenter is speaking to, which is a powerful uh, medium, you know. We, we're called to do friendship evangelism, and I believe that's powerful. But, of course, this is television, and I thank you so much for joining us. Well, we're talking to Chris and Kerry Cole today, and if you've just joined us, a very hearty welcome to you. Uh, you're watching The Reality Show. I'm Dudley Anderson talking to Chris and Kerry Cole. Uh, Chris is the founder, as we've heard, of Cross Rhythms, Cross Rhythms Radio across the United Kingdom and uh, doing great work at that. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, Kerry, I want to turn to you now. Uh, you know, in the beginning when I introduced you, I said, um, sadly, you had a dreadful event in, in your lives when your little girl developed thyroid cancer. Tell us about that. Yes. Um I mean, the, the mystery of it is we had just um, set sail and we knew we were in the right place. We knew we were called by God into this particular chapter of our lives. And it, it was quite uncomfortable for several reasons. Um, but I think when you know that you're doing the right thing, that you're being you, you've been called, like when Jesus said to the disciples, go to the other side of the lake. Um, they would do. They were in obedience when they went, but then the storm arose. And often in our lives, we're in the right place, doing the right thing for God. We're in obedience, but then a mighty storm arises, and this happened. So as everything's developing, with um, expansion of the radio, um, my our, our little daughter came came to us at 10 years old with a lump on the side of her neck. Um, which was investigated over quite a long period of time with doctors who felt it was probably a cyst. And, um, but eventually it came to light that it was thyroid cancer. And um, I'd, I'd just been reading to the girls because um, we were homeschooling at the time, all sorts of testimonies and stories and um, one was, was particularly about uh, Dr. Bernardo and how he'd lost a child. And you just think of the wonderful ministry of Dr. Bernardo, um, which is so ongoing. But um, it, it was, I think God was just preparing that you're going to go through a time of darkness, but just don't let go of my hand. I'm, I'm your best friend. I'm with you. And, and it was like, oh, the storm's coming. We're just going to hold on to Jesus. And... Um, when it came to light 
that and it was revealed after the biopsy that Sarah did actually have cancer. It was um, such a bittersweet time for us as a family, wasn't it? Like we just felt so enveloped in Christ's love in the, in this horrible dark tunnel where you you can't get out of it. You're you're consigned to this tunnel. All your world shrinks, and suddenly you're just in a world where you think everyone else is doing their thing and they've all got this freedom, but we're we're in this tunnel and Sarah was remarkable. She had such a beautiful spirit and um, God got us through it. And she, she came through it after a massive operation um, and a lot of therapy afterwards, she came through and she is a happy wife and mother of two beautiful little girls and doing really well now. Fantastic. Uh, wife and mother, so all grown up. That's amazing, uh, Kerry. You know, as, as you were speaking, um, I got to thinking about, again, one of my favorite little doctrines, really. Um, you know, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Um, and uh, the truth is, he's already in our tomorrow there already. Jesus was in Gethsemane one day many years ago, and he was facing the cross. He, he knew in a couple of hours he was going to be arrested, convicted and crucified. And yet it says in Hebrews that he looked through the cross, scorning its shame because he knew he would be risen from the dead and sit down at the right hand of God in glory. I believe God's already on the other side of the tomorrow. So while you were facing this and, um, you know, when Sarah was having the operations, she was in hospital and it was touch and go. How did you how did you view the future? This is the beauty of um having a journey of genuine faith in the good and the bad times, Dudley. I think our favorite scripture mm -hmm. uh, we probably come into is John 16, 33. Jesus says, and you allude to it like in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, not my will, but your will be done. But in this life, you will have trouble. Take comfort. I've overcome the world, says the Lord. And of course, when you look at where we live today, persecuted church, geopolitical, depending on your end time, eschatology, whatever. But the beauty is knowing that you have a purpose like Christ. You you begin to see in the you begin to see that all the good and the bad stuff happens in God's great economy, which is why I said earlier on I like the book of Job. Um, because at the end of the day, we need to get the balance that God doesn't call us to an easy life, and we can see that the persecuted church certainly walk in something where, um, you know, there, there may be a wake in the dark and we can be asleep in the light, not being condemnatory here, but with the way things are going, it's the intimacy Jesus had with his father that he calls us to have. We must know that our father in the good and the bad times loves us and wants us to walk through life so that we are prepared for the eternal. And um, Sarah had a very strong and sure faith um, of her own. She'd got baptized of her own will and desire when she was eight. Um, so she she had a vibrant and deep faith in Christ. And um, I think as Christians, it is our absolute delight and steadfast certain hope that this when we end this particular part of our journey in life, this this our human yeah. experience, and we face that door of death, that it is there is no victory in it. There, yeah. the sting is gone, and that Jesus has conquered that, and that is the deepest, most beautiful thing of our faith. Yeah, and I, I just I just end on this for Sarah because obviously she had a, a dedication, a word that she would have a deep intimacy with the Lord. And I think one of the things that we need to recognize is there's an incredible freedom and joy in this life with God. I mean, God, you know, blesses us. I, I, I heard a, from a CCM song, a beautiful quote that said, may your, may your pockets be full of gold, but may your heart be empty of greed. <laughs> That's a great saying on the prosperity of God. But equally, in this life you have trouble. I feel that even with Sarah, who's in our church, part of our leadership, um, even that difficult time, Dudley, is being used for her to have a testimony of the cross. You know, things happen in life. And I'm, I'm more concerned at the people that give up on faith because Jesus does want to bless you, but he doesn't wrap us up in cotton wool. 
all the time because he's perfecting us, as Kerry said, yeah. for eternal life. Eternal yeah. life is about making the right choices in and life in the good and the bad times. Jesus was just so beautiful within that whole dark tunnel, wasn't yeah. he? You wrote, he was a, just, you wrote a just poem, that, didn't you? Walking with God when the sky turns black. You know, it's not just for sunny days. Our faith is a, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's just whole, knowing he loves us so immensely, whether whether the car needs a, you know, whether something's gone wrong in the MAT, there's always something in life, isn't there, that, that's absolutely, just... Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Since Fantastic. we left the Garden of Eden, everything's not quite right, and we yearn to get back to that place of peace and security where everything is right. Absolutely, that's absolutely true. Our time is nearly up, uh, folks. Um, for about a minute, uh, or 30 seconds even, um, Kerry, uh, your book, Dying to Live, I've entitled our discussion today, Dying to Live. Your book is entitled Got to Die to Live. Tell us about that book quickly. Well, basically, it follows our whole journey. Um, it starts off where Chris got saved in Brussels. It then talks about my massive wrestle with my religious, rebellious nature and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it, it describes our journey in the way of the external journey of the call of God into all of the different things within ministry. But it also talks of what was the deep inner change, the kingdom of God being within us and Jesus coming to bring his light and love and life into us. And, and just the very real process of that and how it takes courage. Jesus loves courage and it takes courage to face ourselves, to say, actually, Jesus, I'm so shy. I couldn't speak to anybody. I mean, that was me. And look, here I am. It Thank is God. a miracle. It is true. Jesus is powerful. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kerry. Our time is up. Got to die to live books where books are sold. Chris and Kerry Cole, it's been absolutely wonderful speaking to you today on The Realities. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity, the privilege. It's been great to uh, catch up with you again, Dudley. Yeah, lovely to be with you. Fantastic. And indeed, thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can watch us every week right here on The Reality Show. Till next time, you keep your eyes on Jesus and God bless you.